it's time to talk about time. And that's what we're going to do on this episode of Value This with Dr. Lori. Dr. Lori, uh, time marches on. Oh, Carol, come on. It does, it does. We're and 26, <laughs> 27 any day of the week. And, <laughs> and I'm reminded by that, by the incessant ticking yeah, the ticking is really a little like... Yeah, we're talking clocks today. We're at the Bristol Antiques Market. The, the sound that you heard, you know, like my mom had a Westminster chime in the house. So I always think of Westminster chimes. Um, you're at grandma's house and you had pancakes on Sunday and you remember the tick, tick, tick of the clock. Right. The clocks are really sort of like any other type of great furnishings. They are handed down in families. They usually are held for a long, long time. So clocks are quite collectible and valuable too. Okay. Do they have to work to be valuable? It's better if they work in terms of their value. They don't have to be working to be valuable because you can get an expert to actually of course, make them work. But if you want to get there on time, yeah, they should be working. Okay, now let's talk yeah. about this one so I can put it down because okay. it's so heavy. This is just some old plugged That's in exactly what thing. it is. Okay. 1960s era clock. You know, you can usually tell by the plug. This particular clock is nice, UL approved. It's got all its stickers, made in Brooklyn, nice piece. The case is made in one place, the works are made in another place. Probably the works made along the Connecticut shoreline where most 20th century, 19th and 20th century clocks are made. Value on it, probably 100 bucks. Okay, let's talk about these, I guess, what do they call the little grandfather clocks on the wall? They've got a okay. different name. These are called regulator clocks, and they're all different types of regulator clocks here. Really quite nice in terms of value. I want you to think about that idea of two, okay? What do you mean by two? Well, I want you to think about that notion of two parts, the works and, of course, the case, the works and the case. So um, some people love these cuckoo clocks. Are right? they worth anything? Well, you know, they're nostalgic. Like, I look at those, and I think of my Aunt Chris's house in Connecticut, because she had one. So... Basically, these are going to range in value from, you know, your 50 to your $250 range, depending on, you know, how good the material is, how intricate the carving is, how many birds come out of the Google clock, you know, this kind of thing, and how regularly they will come out, 15 minutes versus an hour, that kind okay. of thing. All right. okay. but, but still, are you, are you going to retire on a 401k because you had a cuckoo Maybe clock? Maybe not on a cuckoo clock, but you could retire on a clock. I have appraised clocks that are worth $100,000 or more. Okay. How would okay. somebody know if that old grandfather clock that doesn't work in their house is that valuable okay well first of all you want to look for do you have a, a colored face do you have an actual painted face right on that particular clock if you're looking at a grandfather clock is that face painted right do you have a moon phase where the moon changes right do you have particular types of works notice this they're even selling the actual interior works well that's a great thing so you've got of course brass works certain works from certain time periods who's the maker the maker will have a mark on them too so there's lots of different aspects that go into the $250,000 clock versus the $100 clock. And you've got information. We're talking about general clocks, like this particular clock. This clock is a kit clock. That means it's made from a kit. So Uncle Wilbur in the workshop would take this clock and he'd put these pieces together. The works are there, but then you put together the kit so you feel like you made a clock. Okay. These All are right. about a $400 clock. All right. Well, this one's down for $135. So it might have some issues, something wrong with it, or it might just be that this dealer says, I want it out of here. Okay. And that's how you can and find a bargain. Educate yourself. Educate yourself is okay. how you can find a bargain at uh, drlorev.com too, where there's all kinds of tips about all different types of things, including clocks. Is there any case that's more valuable than another case? Like, I'm going to put this Yes, heavy I like one this down. case, for example. I like this nice German case. First of all, I want you to look for elements that relate to architecture. If it looks like a building, this particular clock is probably a little bit older or more valuable. I want you to look at things like a pediment. I want you to look at things like a cornice. Right? Okay. All these things that you could see on a building, if they're on a clock, they're similar. I want you to look around and say, hey, what's happening with respect to my building, my house, my, uh, my courthouse, my theater, should be transferred into the forms of the clock. Okay. Right? All right. right. And as we get you know, farther away from that, we might see pieces like this, which are portable travel clocks that you might take with you if you're on the Titanic or on a... <laughs> 
a railroad car or if you're traveling somewhere in the early 20th century. So remember, these diminutive pieces might be much more valuable than the bigger ones. Sometimes good things come in small packages. It's valuable to you, may not be valuable to anybody else, but that does that really matter ultimately? That's true, and clocks really do hold their value better than a lot of other things. Okay. Yep. So go go for it. Time's running short, you know, so we got to got to Time move. is running out. <laughs> On us too. Yep. This is okay. Value This with Dr. Lori. We'll see you next time.